Hello valued viewers, I hope you're doing wonderfully well. Today we'll be looking at iHad's symbology and modes including HAD. The helmet mounted display known as iHad's, I guess you would say equivalent to the head up display in a fighter jet you can see when I move my head around here. We can view it from the pilot seat or the gunner seat and today we'll do the pilot seat. Intensity can be controlled by this knob here depending on ambient conditions. And needless to say, it follows wherever your head tracker or VR headset is pointing. There are four modes for it. To cycle those modes, Symbology select switch up to cycle between transition and cruise mode and down to cycle between hover and bob up mode. So up, that's transition mode. Again, that's cruise mode. Down, that's hover mode. Again, that's bob up mode, back to cruise. Most symbology is common between all four modes, but each mode removes and or adds some symbology. So we'll look at those differences. So let's start at the top. We have our magnetic heading tape up here, numbers in 30 degree increments. We are facing the direction of this line here, our lubber line, which it shows here in three digits, 274 degrees magnetic. Note we also have a little chevron here. This is our command heading. This is the heading we should move onto our lubber line here to go into the direction of our navigation fly to queue, which is this guy here. A three dimensional point representing our currently selected destination. We can look down here and see that is waypoint or steer point one. If we go around anti-clockwise, we have engine torque here, currently 80%. And if I adjust my collective, it will go up or down. Going above 98%, I think it is, we'll get a warning box showing here that we're over-torquing the engine. So let's keep that down there. Speed of our aircraft here in knots. That's true speed. So that means speed over the ground minus the wind vector. Next, we have our waypoint or navigation information here. We currently have waypoint 1 selected, which we can, of course, change. The distance to that waypoint is 30.8 kilometers, which we can change to nautical miles in our settings. Here, 26 is ground speed, so that is our actual speed above the ground, taking into account wind. It's the same as the true speed here, because we have no wind on this mission. And we have our estimated time to get to our selected steer point one. If it's above five minutes, then it's shown in hours and minutes. So we're 38 minutes out at current parameters. If we're below five minutes, then it will show it in minutes and seconds. This block down here is our had our high action display. I think I'll skip over that for now and come back to it. Next, this scale on the right is our vertical speed indicator, showing if we're climbing or descending. This is zero here, plus 100, 200, 300, 400 feet per minute, 500 feet per minute, and 1,000 feet per minute, and descending as well, showing we're currently climbing at about 700 feet per minute. This shows radar altitude to the ground or the sea below us, and this shows our barometric altitude, not to the ground or sea below us, but to the altitude where we set our pressure at. In this case, it's sea level, so they both show the same. Next, this guy here is uh, an artificial representation of the horizon. Why is it not on the horizon? Well, we'll show that in a minute. And associated is a pitch ladder. Uh, 10 degrees up, 20 degrees up, 30 degrees up, and the same going down, I think up to 45 degrees up and down. So if I un unlock our head tracker here, why does it follow the helmet? Well, it's because it's in relation to the aircraft, where the aircraft is pointing, not where my helmet is pointing. It follows my helmet so that I can see when I'm looking around what the attitude of our aircraft is. It shows roll, obviously, as well as pitch. Next, we have this solid cross, this dotted cross, and this dashed diamond. This solid cross here is our line of sight cue. It's basically wherever we are looking. This dashed diamond here is technically known as head tracker, but I think that's a bit of a confusing name. The better name is armament data line. 
It's relevant to the aircraft and in line with the aircraft, zero degrees azimuth, minus 4.9 degrees elevation. And if we were to fire a weapon in its default configuration, that is where it will fire towards. This diamond is really used for night flying. Obviously, at night time, all we really see is this symbology. So we know where the aircraft is pointing because of that diamond there. And this dotted cross here is our cued line of sight reticle. That is showing where the selected acquisition source of our other crew member is. That sounds complex, but it's pretty easy. Now I'm going to need to show that off. So I'm going to press left, control and Victor to bring up my George menu for my co-pilot. I'm going to press George left to select a weapon, gun, Let's see if that works. I'm going to unhook my head tracker. I'm going to Point it, let's say, over there. I'm going to press George up. Okay, he's going to move his acquisition source over there. So what I've done is I've asked my front seater to point his sensor there. And you can see the Q now follows that position. Associated with that position, we also have a solid chevron up here on the heading tape showing it in azimuth. Now, you may be looking away from that Q. So we have dots here called queuing dots on our line of sight reticle showing the quadrant that we need to move our head in to get to that reticle so it's saying move your head right and down move your head right and up right and there it is that's how we can find that reticle if we're aiming away from it Right, so let's move down into the high action display a bit. We have a slip indicator here. This is really important for helicopters, all aircraft actually, but especially helicopters. Are we slipping left or right in terms of yaw? If we were not slipping, then this dot here would be in the center of these gates here. You can see we're hugely slipping to the left at the moment, which is bad, obviously. When we're flying forward, we want to use our anti-torque pedals to position the dot in the center, the same as in a fixed wing aircraft. In terms of field of view, we have our field of regard box here and our field of view box here. Now let me unhook the um, head tracker again. Look what happens when I move my head around. We are looking where the smaller box is, the field of view box. That's essentially what we can see. The field of regard box represents the limits of our currently selected night vision sensor. As a driver, I have PNVS and TADS as my night vision source, and I'm pretty sure PNVS is our current night vision sensor, which for memory is 90 degrees left, 90 degrees right, not very far at all up, and relatively far down, obviously, because a helicopter tends to look down rather than up. We have zero degrees elevation there and there, zero degrees azimuth there and there. If I were to look out of my field of regard box, then I've exceeded the sensor limit and I'm warned by a flashing reticle here. We also have a dot here and that again will lead us to our cued line of sight reticle here. So let me show that off. If I move down here to get to the cued line of sight reticle where my co-pilot's acquisition source is, I need to move this onto that dot there, centralize it, pip. And there is my queued line of sight reticle. One thing that we're not showing here is below the speed. If we were exceeding 2G in terms of acceleration of the aircraft, then it would show the G reading, but we're much below 2G at the moment. Next, I think we'll pop over to transition mode. So if I press symbology select up once, pip, we're in transition mode. Some symbology has disappeared. As you can see, the horizon line is now dotted, but otherwise the same. Two bits of symbology are added. First, acceleration cue here. I like to think of it as a top-down view from the center of your view here. The direction of that circle shows the direction that we are accelerating. So we are currently accelerating forward and right a bit. The distance of the circle from the center of our display here shows the magnitude of our acceleration. So we are currently accelerating a lot in that direction. Also, our velocity vector here. This line is, I guess, similar. Again, think of it as a top-down display. It's saying that our aircraft is currently moving, not accelerating, but moving forward and right a bit. In terms of magnitude, it depends which mode we're in. We're in transition mode, so it means it will max out at 60 knots. So it says we're currently moving about 30 knots 
Uh, right, so let's hop over to hover mode now. So symbology select switch down. Similar cues. We've got our acceleration cue again. We're accelerating forward and right. Our velocity vector here, the magnitude changes because the sensitivity of it changes. Where it was maxing out at 60 knots in transition mode, in hover mode and bob up mode, it maxes out at 6 knots. Obviously, some symbology has rem been removed, and we get the addition of a radar altimeter tape, but I'm too high for it, so I need to actually dive to descend slightly. <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, viewers. That's what happens when you pause. <laughs> too much. This, uh, let's give that another go. There. Pause. You can see once we get below 200 feet radar, we get this tape added in here to the vertical speed scale, showing a visual representation of our current radar altitude. 10 feet for each small tick and 50 feet for each um, large tick, so obviously 50, 100, 150 feet. Finally, viewers, bob up mode. Let's go symbology select down once more. Pop bob up. What we've done by entering this mode is place a virtual 12 by 12 foot octagon directly below the helicopter. I could then, for instance, bob up above the trees. The symbology would then allow me to guide straight back down onto that virtual 12 by 12 octagon. And the way you would actually use it is when you enter this mode, the octagon is set in our current position. As we start changing our altitude, if we drift left, right, forward or backwards, then this octagon will move accordingly to guide us back to that original position where we entered the mode. And you can reset it by going out of the mode and back into the mode. Note it has limits. It becomes fully saturated 40 feet in either direction. One thing I've just missed out, uh, viewers, is another version of our velocity vector. And that's because I'm flying a bit funny at the moment. When I pause like this, it goes a little bit strange. So let me just see if I can straighten out before I crash. All right, and um, pause. Pausing in helicopters is hard. Uh, right, another velocity vector. You might call it a flight path marker up here. Uh, I'm in cruise mode at the moment. And that shows where the helicopter is moving to. So, diamond, where the helicopter is pointing with the 4.9 degrees depression, remember. This guy here is where the helicopter is actually moving to under current parameters. So, for instance, if we wanted to fly to this waypoint here, place this guy on that waypoint there and it will fly you directly there in 3D. Right, next, our HAD, High Action Display. I'm just trying to figure out how best to display it to you. If I point there and zoom in, maybe. It's a selection of informations where I'm showing my cursor now. Starting here, Site Select Status indicates the site currently selected within the crew station. Currently, it is Pilot's Helmet Mounted Display, and I'll show here the other options it could be. This here is our range or our range source. It will show ranging depending on what you're doing. Currently, it's showing a default ranging of 1.5 kilometers. Let me show, how, show you how we could change that. I could go to weapon. I could go to range, manual range, 2,000. I think it's in yards. Uh, sorry, meters. So it's now changed to 2,000 meters, 2.0 kilometers. If I were to go to my fire control radar, it would be relevant to that. If I were to laser range, it would be relevant to that, and so on. Uh, below these two here would be site status, and I will show a list of what can be shown there. Next is this guy here, currently blank. It's the weapon control status. It shows you what the other crew member, which weapon they have action. Let me try and do that. If I bring my George up again and I ask him to select a weapon, is that going to work? There we go. Gun, missile, rockets, and so on. And here is a list of what can be selected. Uh, next, this box here, acquisition select source, uh, currently defaulted to TAD. So you remember we were talking about earlier our queued line of sight reticle up here. Uh, currently showing where the TADS, operated by the front seat member, is aiming at. Below that, in this box here, is weapon status. Um, it could display a myriad of indications about a weapon, and it will become obvious when you choose that weapon uh, what it's trying to tell you. And finally, up in this box here, will show weapon inhibit status. If you're trying to use 
a weapon and there's a problem or an issue of some degree which will degrade using that weapon, it will warn you there. Is the weapon out of limits? Is the azimuth out of limits? Is it out of range? And so on. Uh, that concludes the high action display there, the four modes we've looked through, and symbology. Only other thing to say is that extra symbology will be added to the display based on particular weapons and sighting, and obviously that will be covered in the various weaponeering videos. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye.